This is the site of the battle at Chrissy's Mere, which happened on the 6th of February 1901. Seven and a half thousand British troops were attacked by two and a half thousand Boers on this particular site. The idea of the British troops was to encircle the Boer army under the leadership of General Louis Boerter in the small town of Ermelo, which would have effectively ended the Second South African War or the Anglo-Boer War. Unfortunately, the night before, the British troops in actual fact closed off the town of Ermelo. They were attacked inside their own camp by a massed group of 2,500 mounted Boers. What the Boers did was to launch an attack from the eastern section of the town, which is on that side. 500 Boers entered the camp from a southwestern side and penetrated into the camp. They were able to cut the lines of 700 cavalry horses and approximately 800 donkeys, which effectively caused the British forces to be unable to move for the next four days. British Army was un unfortunately unable to move because in the days of warfare of that time, the cavalry was the most important thing which the British would have used to clear the path of their troops as they were moving towards wherever their intended goal or target was. In this particular case, the cavalry was unable to move the next morning because they did not have horses. During the period of time when the 500 Boers were in the British camp, which was this particular area, what they did was that they were met by a group of 82 British under the leadership of Lieutenant Cantor. And Lieutenant Cantor and his group of 81 British soldiers were in actual fact killed in hand-to-hand -hand fighting on this particular site. What is vitally important at this point in time is that many of the buildings from the time of the Anglo-Boer War today are still standing in the small town of Chrissy's Mere. Chrissy's Mere is one of those unique places where development has unfortunately, or in this case from a historical aspect, fortunately bypassed the town completely, which makes this town an absolute perfect place to develop the tourism industry for the future. This particular battle site has elevated the small, very environmentally sound area of Chrissy's Mere into another realm, which is the historic Anglo-Boer War. The small town of Chrissy's Mere, where the graves of the soldiers that fought in the battle at Chrissy's Mere, the 6th of February 1901. Approximately 82 British troops were killed from various regiments and also 71 Boers from different of the commandos that were involved. The most amazing thing about the cemetery is that the two enemies that hated each other so much are today, 107 years later, actually buried next to each other and in the most peaceful place. Inside the cemetery we have um, amazing stories that have actually come out of these uh, particular uh, um, hist historical evidence regarding the people who are actually um, buried here. The Boer uh, bodies, uh, or the, the, what is left of the bodies, has been removed to another place some years back. But of course the graveyard itself is symbolic of the Second South African War, or what we call the Anglo-Boer War. And it's got a rich history that adds to the fabric of the history of the small town of Chrissy's Mere. This is the grave of Arthur William Swanson, a lieutenant in the Inniskillen's Dragoons, which was a cavalry unit. He was shot during the Second South African War, or what we now today call the Anglo-Boer War. This gentleman is a hero. What he did was he rescued Private Garlic off of the battlefield after Private Garlic had been shot, and that immediately makes him a hero because uh, there's no greater sacrifice than to sacrifice your own life to rescue another person. Now an amazing thing happened is, is that this particular gravestone was shipped in from England after the Anglo-Boer War. It was laid on this, on this gentleman's grave. But an amazing thing, a year after the Anglo-Boer War was over, a box of flowers arrived from England from a lady who had sent, without her name attached, who sent the flowers to the local postmistress, asking the postmistress to put those flowers onto the grave of Arthur William Swanson, who was buried in the cemetery at Chrissy's Mere.
Not knowing what it was about, the very nice lady from the post office came up in 1903, placed the flowers on the grave. A year later, another box arrived, this time with pink, one year pink, one year blue, and it went on until 1961. The flowers would arrive every single year, approximately two to three weeks before the 16th of October, and every year the postmistress would come up and she would put the flowers onto the grave. During the years, obviously, the townsfolk would then join the postmistress to come up and in actual fact put the box of flowers onto the grave. During 1961, a letter arrived with a box of flowers to say that unfortunately this particular lady had been the fiancé of Ar Lieutenant Arthur William Swanson and had never ever got married. She was at that time in her late 80s and she was very frail. The possibility was that she was going to pass away and that the box of flowers that arrived in 1961 would possibly be the last box of flowers that would arrive from England for this particular grave. But this is Chrissy's Muir. Strange things happen with locals. The next year the postmistress gathered a bunch of her friends together. They came up to the grave. They then laid flowers onto the grave and that has now become a little mini legend in the town of Chrissy's Mere, where every year local people come up to this grave and they put the flowers down in remembrance of the lady who lived in England who never saw the grave of her lost fiance in Africa. Now this should have ended many years later. It's now 2007 and an amazing thing has been happening over the last 15 years. The local school in the town now gets together, the teachers have taught the young, the young uh, pupils to sing My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. And every year on the 16th of October, if it is a school day, the school children march up from the local school to this grave, all of them carrying flowers. And today this is the new South Africa. So the majority of these students are in actual fact black children. They march up here, they sing. On their way up, you can hear the stand up here, the tour buses arrive, SABC TV arrives, and what happens is these little children march up here, they stand around the grave and they sing, My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean, and they then place these flowers onto the grave. One of the local people then tells the story about Arthur William Swanson and how brave he was, and then everybody that is here, including the tourists, the tour buses, and any of the media people that are here, are then invited down to the hotel where the tourism then gives them a free meal and gives them tea and coffee and so on. This grave is in actual fact the reason why the tourism industry has spent such great effort in ensuring that this graveyard is always presentable, is always neat. We actually put out quite a lot of money every year to ensure that this graveyard presents itself and the historical fabric of this particular town in such a way that it makes it attractive for the tourists who are coming to visit.